So I had a uh, request for a video about windows, putting windows in shipping containers. And if you've seen my video, shipping container containers make no sense. This was the little house that I built and I actually figure materials for it and showed how you could build this house, which is cool for the same price as far as the materials to that point as a shipping container, the way it sits. That doesn't even uh, include the cost of putting in windows and doors and all the other stuff you gotta do to the shipping container. So I'm trying to help people not get caught up into a fad. And I believe that's all these are because these shipping containers, uh, you see people buy them and then the first thing they do is cut big holes in the sides of them and one thing people don't know maybe I guess is that this this the top of this thing is not meant to carry a load all the load on a shipping container is placed on its corners as far as the overall weight now the floor does carry a, will carry a, a load per square foot but if you'll notice when you stack these you get a space between them Right. That's because this is not, the roof is not carrying a load, but the floor is. Okay. So anyway, I don't know how I got off on that tangent, but the point is I'm trying to help people uh, realize that you can build yourself a nice little house, you know, that it's wider. It's 12 feet. This one's 12 feet. You got four more feet inside. You can actually live in it. And the main, the main reason besides cost is that we've come up with uh, construction techniques techniques that are actually really good and based on science. I mean, just this product alone, Tyvek, was developed by DuPont. It, will, it won't allow water droplets, water molecules to go through it from the outside, but it will, well, either direction, but it will, it will allow water vapor to escape the wall system. So we have modern miracles, you know, in the construction industry, uh, as far as building materials and as systems they work. Okay, I'm going to show you real quick on this one. So I thought I would just go through how we how we build a modern house. This is just one section of this wall. So we frame it up. You know, we got our framing, our two befores at 16 inches on center, our headers, all that, and then we put uh, OSB on it copy it. Put that over here. Let's get it on axis because it just occurred to me that it may not. Yeah, there we go. Of course, they're in four foot sheets and the extension I have doesn't show the individual sheets. It just shows like one big slab of OSB, which is fine. That serves its purpose, right? Now, after we put our, our sheeting on, you will put your Tyvek on. And let's see if I can get this to lock axis and go to right there. There we go. And we actually, when we first put it up, we actually don't cut the, the holes out like this. This is just the way that it, the extension I have works. There's a method for installing the Tyvek and the reason I'm bringing this up is that this top flap you cut the Tyvek at an angle at a 45 degree and that um, laps over your uh, window flange okay and then you install your windows now this may seem boring but just bear with me okay then we tape the windows and doors okay now this is one of the most important parts right here this this makes your with the flanges around your windows okay and you tape these you literally don't have to put siding on this house now you see this tie that goes down and laps over the band okay and it hangs down an inch at least as far as the siding is going to hang down so any water that gets in this wall system will just run down, okay? Your siding is just cladding. That's all it is. It's, it's an aesthetic. 
it makes your house look like you got lap or vertical or whatever you want it to do. That's just an architectural feature. This is your weatherproofing membrane right here, okay? This is what keeps water from getting into your house. It also allows the moisture if you have a heating and air conditioning system that's producing a lot of humidity, it allows the tr transversing, is that a term, <laughs> of the inside to the outside. It would gather as uh, water vapor on the back of your siding or on the face of this, and it would collect in droplets and run down the wall, the outside of the wall, okay? So the reason I'm preaching about that is you're going to see in a minute what happens if water gets into a shipping container. Uh, it's there until it dries out somehow, okay? This depends on what type of siding you're putting on and how you're doing it. But for the most, for 90% of the time, you're going to, then you would put your, your window trim on. See if I can gauge how far, how far that is. And then you would put your siding system again which is just, you know, it's just to make it look pretty, okay? All right, does that make sense? Now, now your waterproofing membrane laps over your whole structure and your siding laps all the way down just like the Tyvek it hangs over, okay? That is, that's why, that's why buildings that we build now last a long time and you know they just they just do all right now let's go to the shipping container now what i did was to make this easier to see i have a section plane which is this thing right here that creates a section but i can move it back to show you that um and this indeed is a shipping container okay this is a way we create sections in SketchUp. So I'm just going to, I just want to show you that. Just the section plane. Let's turn it off. So, one of the most popular ways to uh, frame a, a wall system in a shipping container is to turn two by four studs edgeways like this. Uh, because a lot of people will, there's different systems. Uh, where you can spray foam insulation two inches thick and see what we're doing here is we made this you know studs are inch and a half wide or thick so we left it out a half inch away from the wall actually gives you two inches at the narrowest point and probably about four inches at this deepest point so it's pretty good you know, R value there so I'm just going to pull this out uh, how far am I pull it out 48 inches just to show you uh, how you can do this okay now it takes a little sequencing okay what you can do is you can when you're building your rough opening for your window and I'll talk about this header in a second you 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 basically turn the the wind the uh, window opening the rough opening uh, two befores so that they would be three and a half inches, the normal direction, okay? Now, what that means is you're going to have to, you know, cut out your this opening in the metal. You need to plan all this out just like I did, okay? And what I, was at, what I would actually suggest is that you make your rough opening come to the middle of this flat spot, okay, on the inner the inner flat spot, not the outer one. Okay. Now, on on vinyl windows, you can order them in one inch increments at no extra cost. Okay. The reason I'm saying that is because there's, if I had, if I was smart, see, I didn't do it on this one, but if I was going to do it in real life, I would have brought this opening over to here to the middle of this flat spot, and I'll show you why in a second. One of the most important things before you actually build that opening, before you build this wall, and the reason I was trying to pull it out away, was because you need to go ahead and put this uh, this head flashing in because it's going to be a lot easier. I, wonder, I forgot how far out I came. How far out did I come? There we go. So 
This is a this is a piece of Z flashing. I tell you what I'm I'm going to do. I'm going to move it out a little bit, uh, a couple of feet again, so you can see it. Okay. This is what we call Z flashing or head flashing. Okay. This in this case is 24 gauge paint grip galvanized. Okay. That paint grip that paint grip galvanized is basically like an etching on the galvanization that it makes it hold paint, it helps it to hold paint really well. But this Z flashing, it needs to go up at least inch and a half, two inches on the inside, and it's gonna have to have a horizontal distance equal to whatever your jam is. Now, in, in most cases, a two by four will work, but if it doesn't, you'll have to, these pieces of, that are this rough part of the rough opening will have to be ripped down to be whatever width you want them to be. And that means that you're gonna to have to measure this, this horizontal leg uh, of the system that you create. And then the down leg here is gonna be whatever it works out with the window. It depends on what window manufacturer you buy, okay? It's gonna be at least two inches, let's just say that. Now I know what you're thinking, this is a lot of trouble. No, it's not, I do this all the time. Every every house we build, we do head flashing, and it's no big deal. It's just part of the process, okay? Now, on a shipping container, now I told you, I'm going to tell you, that if you had just done it like I told you to over here and build your house instead of buying a shipping container, then you wouldn't have to go through this. So I'm trying, I'm just telling, I'm just reminding you, okay? <laughs> By the way, this opening, this rough opening, or this opening on this shipping container needs to be a quarter inch bigger all the way around, so a half inch bigger. But what that's gonna do is allow you to get these flashings in there and also allow for a little bit of expansion and contraction on this metal, because you're talking about a big old piece of sh slab of metal. So now, the reason I'm saying that about the sequencing is that you need to take this flashing and just tape it up you can use some of this Tyvek tape, okay, or something like that to tape it to the back of the siding uh, before you put your window, uh, your wall framing in, okay? Now we're going to move this back because we're going to pretend like we built this. And obviously, obviously you're not doing it all at one time. You can do it in sections, but for the sake of this, 24. Oops. There we go, maybe 48, not 24. So now, look what's happening is that since you turn this two before this way, it sticks out far enough on most shipping containers, it's gonna stick out far enough to give you this, uh, you know, pretty close like that. Now, the reason that's important uh, to put that piece up there obviously is because now unless you were just to leave out the header right uh, it would be hard to get it in there the simplest thing to do is in sequencing is cut your openings the right size and then make it a half inch bigger okay then put your head flashing up there and then do your wall front wall framing now what we're going to do is go ahead and put the window in And basically your window is going to install flush with that two before. But here's the thing, you have to allow clearances for everything, okay? You're gonna need a quarter inch gap all the way around. And so um, window companies, uh, if the call size on an aluminum window, uh, I'm sorry, a vinyl window is the size, what we call call size is 3050 or something like that, three feet by five feet. Whatever that call size is, is the rough opening for most vinyl windows, okay? So what the vinyl window company does is they undersize the window a half inch to go in that opening. But you need to check, you need to decide which one, what windows you're gonna buy or use if you've got them or whatever. There's a free version of SketchUp. You need to go into SketchUp and plan all this out on how you're gonna do it, okay? So next, you would put the uh, side pieces on. What did I do there? Is that 10 feet? 
So that's the side I meant, I meant the bottom piece. You're going to put the bottom piece on next, okay? Now these pieces, these piece, pieces overlap the window. And then you're going to put sealant there, okay? Now the reason you put the bottom one on first is because you want the two side ones overlapping it. And I will show you right now. Was this 10 feet? 10 feet. So what you do is this piece goes under. It goes behind the top. See how that creates a nice little... I forgot to mention earlier, you need to let this head flashing overlap that half inch. Okay? What that does is after you cock the heck out of this top, the top flange up here, this top leg, okay? After you do that, any, you know, all this water is going to run out over the top, okay? But on the ends, it'll run out past the side pieces, you see? And that makes this a little less important. Oh, it's, it's important to get this piece sealed. Uh, you're going to caulk this gap right here, okay? Now, there's two things that's going to seal that gap. And don't freak out because on every job, every house, there's sealant that has to be applied to seal things off, okay? So this is just another one of those places. You're going to be foaming the inside of this wall, which has a, uh, it's not waterproof, but it will keep water from getting if it's done properly. Uh, you'll have that on the inside and then you'll be able to caulk against that uh, when you slide this uh, corner trim in there. And it goes over the top of the bottom one. See how I've got that? So this all be nice and neat. You can do it nice and neat. Now it might be smart, if you were smart, you would paint these before you put them on, whatever color they're gonna be. Now this is what I was talking about a, a while ago. Uh, this, this, uh, this would be fine. You know, it doesn't look that ugly, but I would plan out your windows so that they work out on this flat spot back here. It gives you a way to, a good place to, easy way to seal that, because you want a big old quarter inch bead of uh, silicone, you know, sealant going down the side there. Here, you may just have a little edge and it might be a little harder to caulk it, okay? And again, one more time, if you make these windows, it doesn't make matter if you make it smaller or bigger, it ain't gonna matter because if you plan this out right, you can order your windows whatever size you want in one inch increments. I know this company YKK does that and Anderson also does that. And so don't worry about it. You don't worry about them being custom windows. Okay. They don't make the windows until you order them anyway. That's why it takes you four weeks to get them, four to six weeks. Now, obviously you can't order 28 and not nine sixteenths. You, I think you have to do it in one inch increments. So if you if you plan all this out, you won't have any any troubles at all. Also, uh, I mean I meant to mention this. This is well. You don't need to weld anything with this. Okay, you shouldn't really have to be welding uh, uh, to to do window. It's just too much. I mean I've been welding on and off for 20 years. I still can't. I still haven't figured out how to do it just right. So. <laughs> Uh, you should see some of the videos I have. Uh, I think the pot building stove or the wood burning stove we, we made. But anyway, um, the other thing I want to mention is uh, something I was talking about before. You see this thin profile of the top of your container? That's all it is. Okay? You got a little channel out here on the corner and a roof panel. Okay? Now, uh, the reason I bring that up is because your windows need headers. And if you're anywhere in any kind of atmosphere where the building inspector is going to look at this, he's going to require a header. Just remember that. And what I would do is I would use a LVL in there. Okay. They're, they're very strong. You can rip LVLs to be whatever space that you want it to be. It doesn't have to be, you know, a lot of people think you can't rip down LVLs. You can. It's just that they take on the, the structural qualities of that new dimension. And then uh, when you foam, you see, you'll be foaming in this little gap around here. Now you would use non-expanding foam around uh, the gap on the inside. And then of course you're gonna use your spray foam. Now they make uh, these insulation kits you can buy. I think they go between 24 inch uh, centers. So 
when you're doing your studs, check the spacing uh, to make sure that it's going to work with whatever uh, insulation system you're going to you're going to use. Anyway, guys, I'm just trying to keep it light, and but I'm trying to also educate people on construction techniques, construction products, uh, what they're used for, and um, how modern building uh, techniques are far superior than anything you can do to a shipping container. So uh, if you got any more questions, let me know, or you can visit me at atdrafting.com. Thanks, guys.